A few months ago, my local lab told me that they were going to start stocking Wolfen NC500 film. I hadn't heard of this at the time, so I did some searching to find out a little more about it. For a very brief history, Wolfen NC500 is made by Orwo. Orwo being original Wolfen, which was part of AGFA until Germany was divided after the Second World War. The East German factory was in Wolfen and originally had the name Webfilm und Chemiefaserwerk AGFA Wolfen, but later adopted the brand name Orwo. The West German part retained the name AGFA. There was the usual smattering of takeovers and changes in structure, but the Orwo brand is still active to this day. Somewhere around 2022, Orwo announced that they were going to produce two new colour films, and from what I've read there were a few issues getting these films to market, but eventually NC400 and NC500 were released a little over a year ago. While doing my bit of research, I also looked at sample images taken using these films, particularly the NC500 that I was probably going to try out, and I didn't love everything that I saw. There appeared to be plenty of very muddy, grainy shadows and a generally contrasty look, but a few photographers seemed to get great images that I really liked, with slightly subdued colours and very little of that muddiness so I picked up a couple of rolls the next time I visited the lab. Wolfen NC500 is a 400 ISO film based on an old AGFA cinema film that was used to film out of Africa, not that I've ever seen that film. And according to the website, it was famous for its greens, desaturated shadows and enhanced grains. Keep that in mind, particularly the desaturated shadows and enhanced grains bit. From what I could tell looking at other photographers' results, avoiding underexposure is pretty important with this film, although there can be many other things that will affect it, such as how the film was processed, how it was scanned, and how it was then edited. Anyway, I popped the first roll in my trusty Miranda Automex 3 and headed out to get some shots, keeping in mind at all times to look out for dull parts of a scene that might end up muddy and exposing accordingly. You might now expect me to say something like, and I wasn't disappointed with the results. But actually, at the time of planning this section of the video, my scans aren't back from the lab yet, so they could be anywhere from, wow, these are fantastic, to, oh my, that's definitely a look. So I'll insert a few shots from my first roll of NC500 now, and then talk a little more after that. Oh my, that's definitely a look. So, bearing in mind that I was forewarned not to underexpose and so on, a lot of these images look quite dull and the shadows are pretty lacking in detail, and the grain? Well, just look at that grain. If we take a look at this edited shot, the sky had quite a bit of colour on the day, with the moon above the clock tower clearly visible, and there was still plenty of light remaining to get a reasonable shot if I had been shooting digital or using a more standard film. 
Instead, what I ended up with was a fairly bleached out sky and dark muddy shadows with more grain than you'd find in the back of a combine harvester after an exceptionally good growing season. If we take a look at the unedited version of the same shot, and bear in mind that I have my film scanned with a flat profile, leaving me room to edit the shots on my computer, it's a fairly dull and lifeless image with very little detail in either the sky or the shadow areas. For another example, take a look at this shot of a timber frame building with the nice old world dry cleaners next door. It was a frosty misty day and I think the grittiness of the shot suits the weather conditions. I had to do a fair bit of editing and boosting to get it to look like this, but compare that to another shot taken by a friend at the same time on a half frame camera with Kodak Ultramax film installed. The half frame shot has had no additional processing, although it was scanned on a more normal profile rather than the flat profile that I always have, but it's got heaps more detail, particularly when you consider that the negative is half the size. You could be forgiven for thinking that I don't like Wolf and NC500, but that isn't the case. I don't think it necessarily lends itself to shooting on overcast winter days when the variety of tones is quite small, but with the right subject matter I suspect it could give really interesting results. I shot this motorbike on outdated Kodak Gold last summer and I loved how it looked on the slightly desaturated and distressed old film stock. If I'd been shooting stuff like that on NC500, I think I'd have been much more excited about the results. Anyway, time to look at a few more shots, and then I'll talk a bit more about my findings. I've still got the second roll of NC500 to shoot. I'll maybe keep that until I've got some more colourful subjects to photograph, or at least wait until we're done with these dull winter days. There were shots on the first roll that came out relatively how I wanted. This shot in a churchyard definitely has that cinematic look to it. I'd have preferred to have a single person passing by the archway at the end of the path, but there weren't many people about that day, so it was three or nothing. And my favourite shot of the roll was this boat moored by the side of a tree-covered section of canal. The light was fantastic, and I knew at the time that it had the potential to be a half-decent shot. As always with this film, it's quite grainy, but it definitely has a very different look compared to most of the regular colour films on offer. Anyway, I think that will probably do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.